Uh-oh. Did you just get sniped? Hmm, I guess you just need to aim better next time. Oh no, you just got killed by a shotgun. Well, maybe you just need to press your W key a bit harder. Oh no, you just got one shot behind a wall with a grenade launcher. Hmm, well, maybe it's time to uninstall Destiny and go play some Battlefield. If you find yourself dying often even though your aim is decent and your loadout is powerful, then this is the video for you. Many of us spend a lot of time practicing our aim or perfecting our builds just to find ourselves back in the spawn screen as soon as we engage with someone. So what can we do about it? Well, stick around and I'll give you my top 5 tips that you can add to your gameplay to make yourself a more difficult target for your opponents. Using these tips, you'll be able to let your good aim and your strong loadout flourish to their maximum potential while at the same time making it really hard for your opponent to play against you. I know that some of these tips can be a bit complex, so bear with me and I'll try to explain everything as clearly as I can with examples. This first tip might sound obvious when you hear it, but it's something that all of us have to keep in mind. Remember that even if you are pinpoint accurate and have perfect aim, or any other program of these sorts, you're still limited by the time to kill of your weapon. Even if you're using an instant kill sniper rifle, you're limited by your target acquisition speed. If your opponent acquires you as their target faster than you can acquire them, or if you're outnumbered, or if your opponent does something to make it harder for you to hit your shots, even perfect aim won't win you the gunfight. I would still recommend working on your aim and actively focusing on improving it, but make sure to keep the big picture in mind. The strongest advantage that you can have is a positional advantage. In a toe-to-toe -to -toe engagement where both players have ideal aim, the result will favor whoever has the better position. This extends to unfair engagements too. Your position might make you more powerful than multiple enemies in bad locations. Positioning is a very difficult topic which certainly deserves its own video, and if you'd like to see something like this please let me know in the comments, but for now I'll give you a quick crash course. Many things make up a good position, mostly the availability of cover, safe retreat routes, and long predictable sightlines with access to key map objectives. Some people get annoyed when they die to heavy ammo, but if you think about it, when this happens, it's just our failure to hold a position that allows our opponent to take heavy ammo in the first place. Another good trait of a good position could be that you have a height advantage. Think about this, if there's a height difference, you might be able to shoot over your enemy's cover and deal damage while they fail to return that same damage towards you. Having a height advantage will mean that you're more likely to land headshots and win the fight. It also makes landing hits with your grenades much easier. There's a good reason that most battle royale games end up with teams fighting for high ground in the final circles. It truly is a huge advantage, and anytime you can position yourself to get high ground in a fight, you should try to take it. Finally, taking uncommon and hard to spot angles can also give you an incredible advantage. If your enemy needs to first figure out where they're being shot from, it's very likely that you'll be able to kill them long before they have the chance to fight back. To summarize, Always remember that your position is either your best advantage or your worst disadvantage and act accordingly. Now let's specifically think about how we can make ourselves a very difficult target. Roughly speaking, we need to think about what our opponents would see in their engagement against us. There's a popular saying that goes, keep your friends close, but your enemies closer. Trials report checks out on this one. Just look at how many people were killed by Fellinger's lie. In the case of Destiny, you shouldn't take this as a call to simply rush directly at your opponent with a shotgun. It also doesn't necessarily mean that you should hug your teammates. What this phrase is trying to get at is that you should pay close attention to what your enemies are thinking, and this advice is multifaceted. Therefore, I'd like to split the second tip into two parts. On the one hand, we can analyze what information our enemies have access to, yet on the other hand, we can think about what options our opponents have to make a play. On the level of intel, you want to gather as much of it as possible while not letting your enemy do the same thing to you. In essence, you try not to give your enemy any free information, while you still try to collect as much free information as possible for yourself. All the way up to super high competitive levels, many players exhibit very repetitive and predictable patterns. Yes, even springy, slidey hunters often fall into the same trap of being predictable by sliding every single corner. This is an excellent bit of information for you to keep tabs on. Whatever patterns you pick up on, you'll be getting an advantage over your opponents that helps you to predict what they might do next. Looking at this from your enemy's perspective, if they can't tell where you're engaging from, and if they have to second guess themselves, they'll be at a strong disadvantage. This is why for example Top Tree Dawnblade is so oppressive as a subclass, even if you forget about the totally fair and balanced melee. 
a good player on Top Tree Dawnblade will always have you second guessing where they're engaging you from. What I'm saying here isn't limited strictly to Top Dawn of course, all classes can play unpredictably, it's just that Top Dawn offers the most creative freedom with its movement and heat rises. In any case, to make yourself a more difficult target, you need to track the information your enemy has on you and play accordingly. If your enemy knows where you're going to challenge them from, be particularly cautious and change your angle of attack. For instance, if your enemy is sniping and they know where you're coming from, you're basically asking to put back into the spawn screen if you peek into the angle that they're already watching with a sniper. This is so true in Destiny that many high level players will rightfully assume that their opponent will almost certainly hit a headshot if they peek into a lane even while sliding. So it's best to just not even give the enemy sniper that opportunity. As much as you'd like to try and kill your opponent, often it's just not worth it to challenge a lane that's already being contested. Even if you hit all of your shots, there's a high likelihood that you'll get sniped before you can win the duel. If your enemy knows what weapons you're using, make sure that they can't play to your disadvantage. For example, don't allow enemies to engage you from long range if you're using an SMG. You need to use cover and movement abilities to close the gap first to give yourself the upper hand. Destiny is often a battle of information, so always be thinking about what your enemy knows and what your enemy sees. Now, the second part of tip number two is thinking about your enemy's point of view. So let's imagine how a duel might go down for your enemy. Obviously, your enemy will be trying to hit shots on you, and this is the starting point for our playmaking. If we want to make ourselves a difficult target, we need to give our opponents as few opportunities as possible to shoot us. The best options here are to play cover, strafe aggressively and unpredictably, and to insert aggressive movements between shots. Have you noticed that many top players will actually insert a slide in between two shots of a hand cannon? They can do this because they don't significantly extend their time to kill, and their aim is good enough to not miss shots while their game awareness is still good enough to make sure that even after the slide, they're in a safe position. For their enemy, tracking a sliding player is more difficult than a strafing one, so it's more likely that their opponent will miss a shot. Sliding between shots is just one big advantage of hand cannons that's often not talked about too much. It certainly contributes to their overall strength. Of course, other weapons also have their own strengths and weaknesses, so it's important to get to know your own loadout. Another method of denying your enemy shots is by a concept called zoning. This is the idea that you always keep tabs on what angles you're open to and what angles you're not open to. When engaging enemies, most of the time it's not a fair one-on-one -on -one duel, so you want to zone out everyone that you're not fighting at the moment. This means that you pick your spot amongst cover so that at any point in time, you're only being shot at by at most one player and you can return fire on that player. In different words, you're trying to separate your 1v2 or 1v3 situation into a quick sequence of 1v1 duels. Good zoning makes it really difficult for your enemies to land shots on you and will make you a more difficult target. My next piece of advice for you ties closely into the previous two. I told you to imagine what your enemy is thinking and to be conscious of your positioning. Once you know what your enemy is thinking, you can avoid their plays and prevent them from getting shots on you. However, we can also use these tips against our opponent by giving them a false impression. What I'm going to explain to you is known in the jargon as jabating, but I'll just call it baiting for this video. While this has a funny tone to it, in truth baiting is very effective and it's a very deep idea which relies on exploiting what our opponents are thinking about us. In practice, it refers to faking a play and getting your opponent into an unsafe position. Essentially, we're using tip number two, what the enemy is thinking, to achieve tip number one, a superior position. The most typical example of a bait really is faking an escape, when you're not actually running away. This happens very often against shotgun rushers since their playmaking is very one-dimensional and predictable. It's not that hard to predict what your enemy's thinking and you can lure them into a false sense of safety. Then from a positional advantage, you can easily kill your opponent. Clearly, a bait is only successful if your enemy actually falls for it and if the position that you get is really good. If you're still dying to a shotgun after baiting, well, then your baiting wasn't particularly effective. Though, it's important for you to understand that baiting can be done with almost any ability or any weapon. It's not restricted just to shotgun rushers. For example, you can bait out ammo from a sniper rifle by faking a peek, which is usually done by shoulder peeking. Here, you show just a tiny sliver of your body to choreograph the idea that you're about to fully expose yourself into a particular lane. Instead of fully strafing or sliding into the lane though, you quickly back off and hopefully, if you sell it well enough, the enemy will try to take that shot and whiff. You can bait out fusion rifle shots using the same idea. 
You can even bait out a hunter shatter dive by faking a push and then quickly retreating. You'll need to adapt your baiting technique for grenade launcher shots a bit, since shoulder peeking here might actually get you killed by the ricochet, although typically a fast escape route can be quite a safe bait for grenade launcher shots. But you can also bait more subtly. In a trials match for example, you can fake a flank to draw your opponent's attention towards a particular part of a map. Good players will call this putting red on radar, and basically the idea is to confuse your opponents so they don't know exactly where to expect to be engaged from. You can also fake going for an objective to make your enemy commit to their attack. Let me give you an example. In this demonstration, my opponents are down a player, but they have a charged chaos reach and the round timer has gone to overtime. At this point, whoever captures the zone will win the round. If all three members of my team rush up to the zone, we'd likely get wiped by the single chaos reach on the enemy team. Instead, you can bait the enemy by fake capturing the zone to make them pop the chaos reach early. You do this by standing on it just long enough to have the objective light up and then run away. If done successfully, it might help you to win the engagement. As you can tell, baiting will make you a really difficult opponent to play against, since your plays become far less predictable and much more devastating. How difficult an opponent you are to face is directly related to how easy your playstyle is to predict. As I've explained, the more unpredictable you are, the harder it is for your opponents to fight against you. While this unpredictability is linked to your movement, it can also come from your loadout choice. If you use a very common loadout, it's decently likely that your opponent will be used to fighting against it. Choosing your loadout to be very slightly off standard, but most importantly without sacrificing your potential performance, can contribute to your opponents making many more mistakes. If your opponent is used to maining their hand cannon, getting close to them with an SMG for example can place them in a really difficult spot. They're either required to run away and create a gap, leaving their position up for grabs, or they need to try to shotgun you, which puts them in the zone where your SMG is most lethal. Using a pulse rifle, we might be able to outduel a 120 RPM hand cannon where it's most effective, at that medium to long range. Using a bastion against a sight and rampart wall, we can deny them the safety behind their shield. You'll often see some highly experienced players which have gone beyond mastering just one loadout, oftentimes switching their loadout just before a match, since they're picking the weapons and armor that are most effective against their opponents. It's basically a destiny version of rock, paper, scissors. There is a different kind of skill required to do this though. You need to be skilled at designing loadouts which can effectively contest the meta, but not just by copying it, rather by outsmarting it. In Destiny, not all of your skill goes strictly into gunplay. If your loadouts don't yield the same results as the mainstream ones, you might need to put a bit more time into developing a well-rounded playstyle with those options. Again, let me know in the comments if you want me to make a special video on loadout building, but for starters, you can find some really fun builds on my channel. My final tip for you is more of a reminder. There are weapon and subclass perks in the game which are specifically designed to throw off your opponent. Here's a couple of them. Bottom Tree Arc Strider has a disorienting blow melee which can strongly stagger your opponent and make it very hard for your opponent to shoot back. A charged melee here is effectively a free win in a melee versus melee battle. In a similar sense, suppression grenades on Titan prevent your opponent from using most of their abilities, including their double jump. Of course, the stasis subclasses have the potential to temporarily freeze or slow your opponents. Ricochet rounds can roll on most weapons, and they allow your gun to tag damage on enemies from behind cover. If you learn the angles, you can get extremely effective at finishing enemies without even having direct line of sight. High caliber rounds also roll on most weapons and simply increase your flinch output. Yeah, it's not flashy, but it does work well. The next two options are flashy though, payload perks. Let me go on a quick tangent here about payload perks. Yeah, they quite literally produce a small flash on your opponent's screen when you hit them. They also significantly increase flinch output. Time payload only rolls on hand cannons, at least for now. It applies a part of the damage immediately, and then it has a slight delay for the remaining damage. The payload portion, which comes a bit later, doesn't experience any damage drop off and deals a tiny bit of AoE damage. Both impacts flinch your opponent separately, so the time payload is extremely effective for throwing them off. Explosive payload applies the full damage immediately, however it splits off part of the damage of your bullet into the payload portion, which doesn't get damage drop off. It also does AoE damage slightly better than time payload, however explosive payload doesn't flinch on two different occasions, rather just one bigger stronger one. Payload perks are extremely effective, especially thanks to their AoE damage and to their reduction in damage drop off. I personally find it slightly harder to aim with them, but I think that the trade off of making your opponent's screen light up like a Christmas tree is probably worth it. I do have a bonus tip for you just for fun, 
But before we get into it, I wanted to give a big thanks to the sponsor of this video, which is a product that I've been using almost every day for several months now, the Chirp Wheel. I spend a lot of time in front of a computer every day between working on videos like this one and playing games. Of course, so much screen time often leaves me with some stiffness and pain in my back. A number of months ago, Chirp sent me a pack of their wheels to try out and I have to admit I really love them. These wheels have a cool design that puts pressure into the spots where you really want it and it stretches out the muscles in your back. Every time I use these wheels, my back feels immediately much better. The wheels come in three different sizes, they have small, medium, and large, but my personal favorite is the medium one if you had to pick just one. If you'd like to take them for a test drive and see how awesome they are for yourself, you can visit pattycakes.tv slash chirp and use code pattycakes underscore gaming to save some money. Thanks again to Chirp for sponsoring this video. And here we are at the end of the list. Thank you for staying and let me know in the comments if you made it this far. I have a bonus tip for you. I was kind of scared to put this one in the video to be honest. Yeah, I'm talking about grenade launchers. If you want to continue the idea of making your opponents have a rough day, you could I guess use a blinding grenade launcher. With some recent announcements to shotgun tuning in the Crucible, I think that breech-loaded grenade launchers will start to see even more play in PvP. And while I do think that regular grenade launchers are overall a bit stronger, the blinding grenade launchers are particularly annoying. You don't even need to get a direct hit to apply the blinding effect. You can use these in many creative ways, like for example as a flashbang to get your teammates to quickly push from a flank. If you'd like to continue learning, check out my video on game sense. It should help you with just vacuuming up all of the information from the battlefield to make you a better player. It's the video on the top right of your screen and also linked in the description. 